Hey guys, welcome to another brand new video. I'm Aditya, and in this video, guys, we'll be learning about input and output in Dart language. So this is actually a thing which would be covered in the beginning itself, but I thought I would explain all the interesting concepts and later come out of this because it's very basic and it's very easy to understand. Right now, after you learned all these things, it would be very damn easy for you to understand this thing also. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. So guys here as you can see I just have a main.dart file and I'll just close this one extra dot file it is there and here in the main file we are gonna and one more thing to remember is that I have added this dart IO library so we are, we are working with input and output streams so they are called as streams input stream and output stream so that's why we must include this library also dart IO so guys now we will just see how we usually print to the console so I'll just write flutter so a framework for Dart and now let me just run this program and as you can see it has printed flutter perfectly and it has exited the program so whatever is there in the print function is being executed now the IO library provides us std out or standard output stream which gives us more functionality rather than just the sprint function so let's see what else functionality it gives us so for using that I'm gonna write std out and here I'll just write dot dot operator and here as you can see it provides us with multiple functions and member vari variables you can call them so here first we'll be discussing about these in the last which we have that is write line write all and write so now let us check the first one which is write and here I can just give my okay I'll just give flutter itself I'm fed up of writing my name in all the videos guys I'm sorry for that if you are also fed up with that so now let me just run this program again so guys as you can see it has also printed flutter the same way as the print function did and now we are gonna add ln to it so it is right line so it was right std out dot right and now we are adding std dot right line so now let us see what this does to the program so i think you can see the difference that when we are using write it has only printed that it has only taken one line and it has printed it out and after that it exited it whereas right line prints it at one line takes another line space and or goes to the next line and then exits it whereas in write it actually prints it and exits in that line itself so that's how it works right and right line and now let us see the other one which is right all i think so it is right all so as you can see right all and here it's gonna take an iterable object suppose like map sets or list and it does a special thing which would be very fascinating for you to see that so I'll just give some values inside this thing so I'll just write so these are some of the popular frameworks web frameworks and mobile app frameworks and now if we hover on this we'll get a description about what this function will do and here it says iterates over a given list of objects and so as you can see list of objects and here writes them in sequence and after that if separator is provided so here we have an optional parameter so in the previous video while we are discussed about functions that time we covered this which is an optional parameter and named parameter if you have not seen that check that video and then come back over here and here as you can see the square brackets over here also denote that this is an optional parameter and this optional parameter is a separator so what exactly is a separator so it will separate each element so first let us see how it works without giving a separator so i'll run this program and here as you can see it has printed all in the same line that is flutter react angular simple now let us add a separator and see how it works so i'll just write comma and here i'll give some dash i'll give dash and here let me just run this program and as you can see it has separated each element with a dash as you can see over here so that's how it works you can not only add a dash you can add pretty much any value i'll just give a space inside that and it will also give space inside that as you can see in the output so flutter react angular so that's how it works right all so it is giving more functionality than actual print function so print function doesn't have this if you take in python it has that separator thing but in dart if you want to use it you must use this st standard output stream and this function right all and there are more functions but it might be a little bit difficult for you guys right now to understand all those functions so we won't be covering that and now let's go to the input input part of standard library or standard streams so we are going to write std and we are going to use std in 
and here we are going to use the read line sync and here the description also as you can see it says read a line from stdin and whatever it reads from that input is a string data type so let me just use this and i'll keep like this so now if i run this program it will ask me for an input so i can give anything and it will exit so that's it and i can even store it in a variable so if i want to store it in a uh, i'll just write var my var equals and here we can use the std out so first end it with the semicolon and here std out so it is better we'll use print function for now writing that much big line but better you use the print function itself because it's very short and easy to write when you need more customization for your output statements that time you can use the standard output it is not necessary and compulsory that you must use the standard output you can use the print function as usual now i'll just write my var so it will print my var inside the terminal when i run this program so i'll just write like this and it's asking me for input and i'll press like this and it is printing that so let us check the type of it dot runtime type if you remember it is runtime type and now let's again go back to the terminal and let me just give a string value and it is still that now let me just uh, give a numerical value still it is a string now to actually convert it we can use the same way how we did in kind of when we were doing the type conversions thing so that time i used int dot parse so if you remember int dot parse function to convert it to an integer number and now let us go back to this and here i'll give like this and as you can see it has changed successfully to int and here we can even change it to double as well so d o u b l e and let us go back over here and double and three point so something random value is double that's great so guys that was about the standard input and standard output in dart i hope you like this video please be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss any updates and don't forget to like this video as well so thanks for watching see you in the next video